Okay, so just recently we did get a a trailer for Logan, which actually looked pretty cool. And we also hear that Tim Miller has actually dropped out of Deadpool 2. So I kind of want to do a video where I wanted to rank the actual X-Men directors, all the directors who've actually directed all the all nine of the X-Men movies that we've seen over the years. So I'm gonna rank each one of them based on how I feel about their directing style and their general films in total. The first one I'm gonna to have to start off with is Gavin Hood. Now Gavin Hood unfortunately directed X-Men Origins and X-Men Origins to me is just the worst X-Men out of all the X-Men in general. It just felt really off and the tone was just really weird and it just was a really unbalanced movie. Gavin, it's not his fault entirely, but some of the things in that film are questionable. Now the film was released back in 2009 and back in 2008 there was a writer strike and that really did affect the overall story of the movie and you can really feel the writer strike because the the balance of the story is off and they try to appeal to a bigger audience. It just felt like it was trying to appeal to everyone and it just failed. There's a lot of questionable CGI and there's a lot of moments where it felt kind of cartoonish but not in a great way. Also they try to recreate moments we've seen in previous X-Men movies. We've seen the kind of scene where Wolverine gets his aluminium claws before and we've seen that briefly, very briefly in X-Men 2 and X-Men 1 in the type of nightmares that Logan gets and in those brief moments we've seen they were really well done. Brian Singer just done a better job of really creating those moments in a very brief amount of time. But in here when we see him getting aluminium claws for the first time it just didn't work. It just lacked that kind of those beats, it lacked that kind of drama that was done in those brief moments in X-Men 2. I didn't quite like Danny Houston as as William Strider, he just didn't have that same kind of cold, calculated side that we've seen William Strider with Brian Cox. We didn't quite see that. You can definitely tell in this film that there was a lot of creative control taken over by the producers, mainly because of what they'd done to Deadpool in that film. That was truly unforgivable. You know, and even that, that scene, that fight scene in the end of X-Men Origins, it just felt so weird. It was just, it was Victor and it was Logan and they're teaming up and they're fighting Deadpool and Deadpool has aluminum claws and he can shoot lasers out of his eyes. It was just really weird. It was just a really weird decision to do. And that's why I feel Gavin Hood is just the worst X-Men director we've seen so far. Okay, my next one is going to be Brett Radner. Now, Brett Radner, who done X-Men The Last Stand. So he was the director who kind of concluded the original X-Men trilogy. And, you know, that film was just really disappointing. I mean, because there was a lot of story going on all at the same time. There's the Cure plotline, there's the Phoenix plotline. It was a very bloated movie. There's a lot of characters in it. There's a lot of subplot that was just really unnecessary. A lot of characters just had no purpose to the story. Uh, Rogue, who was a central character in X-Men 1 and 2, she had no part whatsoever in X-Men 3. It just felt really weird in that sense. I mean, in saying that, there is some great action scenes in X-Men The Last Stand. There's some great little iconic scenes. I think the, the scene where Magneto lifts the bridge, that scene is great. And the scene where the X-Men go up against the Brotherhood, that scene is also great, but the film just doesn't feel great. I mean, there's a lot of dramatic moments that just feel flat and they just feel boring. There's also Vinnie Jones as Jabberknot, which was really bad casting as well. It's just not a great film that really lacked a sense of vision. It's more like Brett Radner trying to replicate Brian Singer's vision, his directing style, rather than him kind of doing his own thing. That's why I just don't think he was a great director for the X-Men franchise. The next director on the list is James Mangold. Now he himself done the Wolverine back in 2013 and he also is continuing to do Logan, the final Wolverine movie featuring Hugh Jackman and possibly the last film featuring Patrick Stewart as Professor X. And I gotta say, I, I honestly think that 
Hugh Jackman's best performance as Wolverine was in fact in the Wolverine because they add a lot more layers to his character the idea that he's a character that's still is still traumatized and still broken hearted about Jean Grey in the events of X-Men Last Stand and in a way the Wolverine kind of adds to the X-Men Last Stand actually improves the film quite a lot seeing this kind of broken version of Logan seeing this guy who's deserted himself away from the other X-Men. That was really well done and James Manigold done a great job with all that. Also, Wolverine is a gorgeous looking film. It's a really nice looking film. I think the idea of moving it to Japan was genius because visually it added such a great sense of style to the movie. It kind of had that Asian sense of style to it and that really worked for the Wolverine. It just added a different sense of filmmaking to the Wolverine. I also loved the action scenes. I thought the action scenes were all great. The idea of seeing Wolverine go up against the Yakuza's was just fantastic. The, the, the scene uh, with the train, that high speed train was also absolutely wonderful. There's also a great scene in the third act where he goes up against kind of the elitist villain. So it was kind of a Quintana versus kind of Wolverine's claw scene. And that scene was also great. But in saying that, the third act is one of the worst things about the film. The idea of creating the Silver Samurai as this kind of robot kind of tech suit for kind of the lead antagonist just really didn't work for me. I mean, if the third act was perfect in that movie, I would rank James Manigold way higher. But then again, I would have to blame the writer and the producer for the third act more than James Manigold. Mangold. His work in Logan looks absolutely fantastic as well. I just really think this guy, he really understands Logan, Wolverine's character. That's why I really respect him as an X-Men director. Okay, my next director on the list is Tim Miller, who sadly actually left Deadpool 2 because of creative differences with Ryan Reynolds. Now, I've read into a lot of comments about Deadpool 2 and people say that, oh, well, Tim Miller, well, he was just, his direction was pretty you know, average, and it was mainly because of Ryan Reynolds and Rogers that made the film so good. I actually think that Tim Miller had a tremendous amount of style for in the first film. I think the the opening sequence with the the car chase and the car and the way the car crashes and the credit sequence that was all fantastic and wonderfully well done, and it just felt so perfect. I also love the idea that the action scenes are the best we've seen in the X Men franchise. They're really well shot. They're all wide shots. They're all kind of long shots. And it just looks all fantastic. Also, I must give, give credit to the characters actually looking and feeling like characters from the X-Men franchise. I loved how Colossus looked in that movie. Colossus actually looked so perfect in Deadpool. Now, I don't know if that was Tim Miller's decision, but I feel it is Tim Miller's decision because I've read into interviews where he wanted Colossus to feel bigger and more like the character we know and love in the comics. So I think that was his decision. Also, the costume for Deadpool is perfect. And I de generally think that was, once again, Tim Miller's decision. If it was a Brian Singer film, we would have seen Deadpool in some sort of black leather costume rather than the red and black costume that we've seen in the movie that looks so perfect in action. And that's why I really respect Tim Miller as a director. And I'm so disappointed that he actually stepped down from doing Deadpool 2. Okay, so the next director on the list is Brian Singer. The guy who pretty much started off the cinematic X-Men franchise. Now, we all have very, very, very mixed visions on how we feel as Brian Singer as a director for the X-Men franchise. But he's also done a tremendous amount of good for the X-Men franchise. While we hate the fact that he has the... that. All the X-Men were these really black, generic kind of leather costumes. And while the fact that Cyclops has kind of stepped down quite a bit compared to other characters in the X-Men series, he still has done so much good for the X-Men franchise. I mean, he was responsible for, you know, Patrick Stewart being Professor X, Hugh Jackman for being Wolverine, Ian McKellen for being a incredible Magneto. You know, he was responsible for all those things. You know, he was, he also gave us some amazing action scenes in the X-Men franchise. We got the amazing scene in X-Men 2 in which Nightcrawler tries to assassinate the president in the opening of X-Men 2. That scene was absolutely incredible. And we have to give full credit to Brian Singh for that. We also got the incredible scene with, with Quicksilver in X-Men Days of Futures Past 
We also got kind of a replicate scene to that in X-Men Apocalypse, which also looked incredible. He gave us X-Men 2, which was a great X-Men movie, which was one of the best X-Men movies out there. He also gives X-Men Days of Futures Past, which was a wonderful and incredible follow-up to X-Men First Class. I know a lot of people have given a hard time about X-Men Apocalypse. I I didn't quite like that film. I was very disappointed with that film, mainly because X-Men First Class and X-Men Days of Future Past were such great X-Men movies, and they raised such a high standard for the X-Men franchise. And seeing X-Men Apocalypse go down a generic and very cliche route really dampened Brian Singer as a director for the X-Men franchise. But this guy done so much for the X-Men He's created so many iconic moments and he done so many great things for X-Men uh, characters. I know certain things are great and certain things don't look how we imagine the X-Men characters. But he's still done an incredible amount for the X-Men movies. Okay, so number one pop pick for best X-Men director and this guy, Matthew Vaughn. I've got to give it to Matthew Vaughn. I just think he done an absolutely incredible job handling a prequel cool story to the X-Men. Now, I will say that he probably created a lot more continuity problems with the X-Men series, but he also done so many great things for it. I think the casting of a young Xavier and a young Eric Lecter, those casting was great. I think James McAvoy and I think Michael Fassbender were great. The chemistry between two, the conflict that rises between the two was really well done and really carries across perfectly. I also loved this, the the setting and the time point. All of that was great. And that replication of the 1960s, it was all really well done. And just having an X-Men movie set in the 60s gave it such a tremendous amount of style and just gave it a tremendous amount of color and also gave it a tremendous amount of conflict because they had that kind of Cold War um, drama kind of building up in the background and it just contrasts so well with this mutant kind of storyline. It was absolutely brilliant in that sense. I actually really enjoyed that. Also, Matthew Vaughn is great at directing action and seeing seeing the likes of Magneto use his using his magnetic ability on a, a load of Russian soldiers. That was a great action scene. Even the third act is filled with wonderful and creative action set pieces that really uses each mutant's powers and abilities. Also, Kevin Bacon as Sebastian Shaw is an actually great X-Men villain. He really stands as one of the better villains out there. It's just a great movie. And Matthew Vaughn really accelerated, you know, the X-Men franchise. I, I also love the way that he kind of goes against the kind of black leather costumes we've seen before and gives these really cool yellow and blue costumes that actually looked very similar to the X-Men first class costume they felt really accurate and having henry jack jackman compose the the movie was a strike of genius because because of that we got that incredible music score that incredible uh, le motif for magneto i'm pretty sure it's called the frankenstein's monster that's the le mo- name of the le-, le motif for magneto i could be wrong but i'm fairly sure that's it but in saying that he's just simply the best director for the X-Men franchise. I'm, I was a little disappointed when I heard he stepped down from X-Men Days of Future's Past, but instead we did get a wonderful and incredible film with Kingsman. So I don't hate him for that at all. And that's just my opinion on how I feel about the X-Men directors over the years and how I feel, how I'd ranked him from worst to best. And I, I want to see how you would rank the X-Men directors. Who do you think's the worst? Who do you think's the best? What's your favorite X-Men movie? Put down the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you like what you see.